Of the hundreds of fighter kites I've made over the years, bamboo is what I use for the spine in 98% of them. I really like the properties of bamboo for the use of a spine in a fighter kite. It really works well. Because one of the things that you need in a fighter kite spine is you need to be able to put a bend in the spine and you need that bend to be, to remain after it's been formed. And with bamboo, you can just use the heat of your hands and bend it and it'll stay bent. Unless <laughs> you're flying the kite in humid or damp weather. <laughs> the moisture then soaks into the bamboo if you don't have the bamboo sealed in some way. And that allows the bamboo to relax its hold on the bend. And the bend changes to just about no bend. So in those conditions, bamboo doesn't work very well. So many kite makers prefer using carbon fiber because of that, and because bamboo isn't really readily available. So carbon fiber comes in two forms that are typically used for making spines. One is a, a flat carbon, which is thin on one edge and thicker on the other. It's just a strip and the other is just a round rod. Either one can be used equally well. The flat carbon has a couple of advantages over the uh, round rod. One of them is that because all carbon fiber spines have to have a mechanism to make them bend and hold the bend, either a tension line or some other method to hold the spine bent because it doesn't hold its bend after you bend it like bamboo does. It comes back to its natural straight shape. So the flap type of bamboo, the, the strip, you can actually drill holes using a small uh, Dremel drill, holes right through it to put your tension line uh, that you need. Now, this kite has a carbon fiber spine. And I use a tension line to create a bend in that spine. This tension line is adjustable. I can change the amount of bend anytime I want to allow me to best utilize the kite versus the wind condition uh, and optimize its flight. So in doing the, in making the uh, tension line, I use a knot that's adjustable called a taut line hitch. And I'll put uh, how to make that at the end of the video. This tension line can be put where one end is at the tail and one end's at the nose of the kite so that when it's tensioned, the spine will bend near its center. If that's where you want your bend, that would work great. Now, I prefer the bend location somewhere about, oh, an inch to two inches towards the nose of the kite from where the wingtip line crosses the spine. So I position my uh, tension line so that it creates the bend in that general area. I don't think it's too critical where it is, but that's something that you have a choice about when you make the kite. 
The other thing is that the carbon fiber is uniform in its flexibility throughout its length. I prefer my fighter kites to have a stiffer spine towards the tail. Now, I'm not 100% sure that's truly a necessary thing, but that's what I have preferred, and so that's what I do. And to create that, I super glue an additional piece of carbon fiber onto the lower section of the spine. And I will use either a round piece, like a rod, or I might split the rod and just put half of it on there, depending on how much I want. Like you can split it, like here I did. I just use a, a utility knife and it splits quite easily. And then I can just glue the flat side to the flat carbon spine on the lower portion if I want. Or I could use a piece of bamboo or anything that's a little bit going to add a little bit of stiffness. So carbon fiber is probably now among North American fighter kite makers the most popular material for making a spine in a fighter kite. Now, for the bow, carbon fiber has always been the primary material used, but now it's also for the spine. 